Imagine a car that runs on one of the most abundant elements in the universe, and the only thing coming out of its tailpipe is water vapor. No gasoline, no diesel, no carbon emissions, just clean energy. That's the promise of hydrogen engines. But how do they actually work? Are they just like electric cars? Do they still rely on combustion? Or is it something completely different? In this video, we're breaking down the science and mechanics behind hydrogen engines. From how hydrogen is used as fuel to the two main types of hydrogen-powered systems and why they might just be a key part of our transportation future. Right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the fuel itself. Hydrogen is the lightest and most abundant element in the universe. It's clean, meaning when it reacts with oxygen, the only byproduct is water vapor. No carbon dioxide, no pollutants. That alone makes it super attractive as a green alternative. But unlike gasoline or diesel, hydrogen isn't an energy source we can dig up and burn directly. It has to be produced, usually by splitting water using electricity, called electrolysis, or from natural gas through a process called steam, methane reforming. The former is clean but expensive. The latter is cheaper but still emits some carbon. This is where things get interesting. There are two main ways hydrogen can be used to power a vehicle. First is hydrogen internal combustion engine. And second is hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicle. Let's talk about the internal combustion engine first, since it's probably the one you're most familiar with. A hydrogen internal combustion engine actually works a lot like a regular gasoline engine. You have cylinders, pistons, valves, crankshafts, all the usual components. But instead of injecting gasoline into the combustion chamber, you inject hydrogen gas. The engine mixes hydrogen with air, compresses it, and then ignites it with a spark. Boom! Literally! That explosion pushes the piston down and turns the crankshaft, just like in any traditional engine. Now here's the kicker. Instead of producing CO2 and all the nasty stuff gasoline combustion does, burning hydrogen mainly creates water vapor. That's it. The combustion process is cleaner and, in theory, much better for the environment. But there are some challenges. Hydrogen burns extremely hot and fast. That means the engine has to be specially designed to handle the intense conditions. Also, there's a risk of forming nitrogen oxides due to the high combustion temperatures. Those are still pollutants, even if CO2 isn't present. So while hydrogen combustion engines are cleaner than gasoline engines, they're not perfectly clean. Now let's move on to the second kind of hydrogen engine, fuel cells. This is where things start to feel futuristic. Fuel cell electric vehicles don't burn hydrogen at all. Instead, they use a chemical reaction to convert hydrogen into electricity, which then powers an electric motor. Here's how it works. Hydrogen is stored in high-pressure tanks in the vehicle. That hydrogen is fed into the fuel cell, where it meets oxygen from the air. Inside the fuel cell, a special membrane, called a proton exchange membrane, splits the hydrogen molecules into protons and electrons. The electrons are forced to travel through an external circuit, creating electricity. That electricity then powers the motor that drives the wheels. Meanwhile, the protons move through the membrane and eventually recombine with the electrons and oxygen to form, you guessed it, water. That's the only byproduct. No emissions, no smoke, no engine noise. Just water trickling out of the tailpipe. Here's another important difference. Efficiency. Fuel cells are significantly more efficient than combustion engines. Traditional internal combustion engines, whether gasoline or hydrogen, only convert about 20 to 30% of the fuel's energy into usable power. The rest is lost as heat. Fuel cells, on the other hand, can reach 60% efficiency or more. 
That's a huge improvement. And because they use electric motors, they also benefit from things like instant torque and regenerative braking, just like battery EVs. Okay, so hydrogen sounds great so far, but how does it stack up in real-world use? One big plus is refueling time. Hydrogen cars can be refueled in just three to five minutes, similar to filling up a gas tank. That's way faster than charging a battery electric vehicle, which can take 30 minutes to several hours depending on the charger. Hydrogen vehicles also tend to have longer range. Some models can go over 300 or even 400 miles on a single tank. But here's the downside. Hydrogen infrastructure. There just aren't that many hydrogen refueling stations, especially outside of places like California, Japan, or Germany. Until the infrastructure catches up, range doesn't mean much if you can't find a place to refuel. So where is this all going? Some automakers like Toyota, BMW, and Hyundai are still investing heavily in hydrogen, both in fuel cells and hydrogen combustion engines. Hydrogen is especially appealing for larger vehicles like trucks, buses, and trains where batteries would be too heavy or slow to charge. That said, battery electric vehicles still dominate the market for now, mostly because the infrastructure is better developed and the technology is more mature. But as we move toward a cleaner, greener future, hydrogen engines could play a critical role, especially in areas where batteries fall short. So, whether it's through combustion or fuel cells, hydrogen has the potential to revolutionize the way we power our vehicles. It offers a clean, efficient, and highly versatile alternative to fossil fuels, one that produces little to no harmful emissions and could help reduce our dependence on oil. From passenger cars to heavy-duty trucks, trains, and even aircraft, hydrogen can be adapted to fit a wide range of transportation needs. But it's not without its challenges. Producing hydrogen in an environmentally friendly way is still expensive. Storing it safely and distributing it across large areas requires major infrastructure upgrades. And right now, hydrogen fueling stations are few and far between, making it difficult for most people to even consider owning a hydrogen-powered vehicle. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.